There you go. All right, let's see. There we go. Hey, y'all. All right, let's try that. Sorry, I got a little late from class, and then I was having some connection issues down here. Hey, Bill. So it said, my phone said I was live, but it wasn't logging in. No, 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 Julia. This is fabulous. We had a great discussion in class. And now here we are. So like I said, I was having some connection issues with the Internet here a minute ago. So if I freeze or something, will somebody please text me and let me know? Because when you're doing it on this end, you don't always get a good update from, from the Facebook saying you've frozen or you're not working anymore. So text me if I go, go funky. Let's see. Let's try that again. Judith, can you hear me now? Hey, Rev. Let's see. All right, let me know if we have sound. Okay, fabulous. Thank you. Okay. Oh, thanks, son. Okay, good. Good. All right. That's helpful. Yeah. Like I said, if there's a connection issue, sound issue, just text me. Text me and let me know. Okay. So thank you for your patience. Uh, we are on page 109 this evening, an order of worship for the evening. All right, page 109, an order of worship for the evening. Light and peace in Christ Jesus our Lord. Jesus said, you are the light of the world. A city built on a hill cannot be hid. No one lights a lamp to put it under a bucket, but on a lampstand where it gives light for everyone in the house. And you, like the lamp, must shed light among your fellow men so that they may see the good you do and give glory to your Father in heaven. Let us pray. Almighty God, we give you thanks for surrounding us as daylight fades with the brightness of the Vesper light. And we implore you of your great mercy that as you enfold us with the radiance of this light, so you would shine into our hearts the brightness of your Holy Spirit. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And on page 112 is the Phos Hilaron. Please join me in praying that. O gracious light, pure brightness of the ever-living Father in heaven, O Jesus Christ, holy and blessed, now as we come to the setting of the sun and our eyes behold the vesper light, we sing your praises, O God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. You are worthy at all times to be praised by happy voices, O Son of God, O giver of life, and to be glorified through all the worlds. Our psalm for this evening is a portion of Psalm 119. It begins over on page 773. Page 773. Once you get there, let us pray through this together. So on page 773, we'll begin with verse 121. We'll read through to, to verse 144. Please read with me. I have done what is just and right. Do not deliver me to my oppressors. Be surety for your servant's good. Let not the proud oppress me. My eyes have failed from watching for your salvation and for your righteous promise. Deal with your servant according to your loving kindness, 
and teach me your statutes. I am your servant. Grant me understanding, that I may know your decrees. It is time for you to act, O Lord, for they have broken your law. Truly I love your commandments more than gold and precious stones. I hold all your commandments to be right for me. All paths of falsehood I abhor. Your decrees are wonderful, therefore I obey them with all my heart. When your word goes forth, it gives light. It gives understanding to the simple. I open my mouth and pant. I long for your commandments. Turn to me in mercy, as you always do to those who love your name. Steady my footsteps in your word. Let no iniquity have dominion over me. Rescue me from those who oppress me, and I will keep your commandments. Let your countenance shine upon your servant, and teach me your statutes. My eyes shed streams of tears, because people do not keep your law. You are righteous, O Lord, and upright are your judgments. You have issued your decrees with justice and in perfect faithfulness. My indignation has consumed me, because my enemies forget your words. Your word has been tested to the uttermost, and your servant holds it dear. I am small and of little account. Yet I do not forget your commandments. Your justice is an everlasting justice, and your law is the truth. Trouble and distress have come upon me, yet your commandments are my delight. The righteousness of your decrees is everlasting. Grant me understanding that I may live. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. We've been reading the prophetic scriptures for the last few days. We read Daniel last evening. We were reading Hosea for a couple of days. This evening, uh, I am going to take us into the Gospel of Luke for a little bit. This is Luke chapter 5, beginning with verse 27. After this, he went out and saw a tax collector named Levi sitting at the tax booth. And he said to him, follow me. And he got up, left everything, and followed him. Then Levi gave a great banquet for him in his house, and there was a large crowd of tax collectors and others sitting at the table with them. The Pharisees and their scribes were complaining to his disciples, saying, Why do you eat and drink with tax collectors and sinners? Jesus answered, Those who are well have no need of a physician, but those who are sick. I have come to call not the righteous, but sinners to repentance. Then they said to him, John's disciples, like the disciples of the Pharisees, frequently fast and pray, but your disciples eat and drink. Jesus said to them, You cannot make wedding guests fast while the bridegroom is with them, can you? The days will come when the bridegroom will be taken away from them, and then they will fast in those days. He also told them a parable. No one sews a piece of a new garment, and no one tears a piece of a new garment, and sews it on an old garment. Otherwise the new will be torn, and the piece from the new will not match the old. And no one puts new wine into old wineskins. Otherwise the new wine will burst the skins, and will be spilled, and the skins will be destroyed. But new wine must be put into fresh wineskins. And no one, after drinking old wine, desires new wine, but says the old is good. The word of the Lord. Our canticle for this evening is on page 119. It's the Song of Mary. When you get there, please pray with me. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God, my Savior, for he has looked with favor on his lowly servant. From this day, all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him in every generation. He has shown the strength of his arm. He has scattered the proud in their conceit. He has cast down the mighty from their thrones and has lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things, and the rich he has sent away empty. He has come to the help of his servant Israel, for he has remembered his promise of mercy, the promise he made to our fathers, to Abraham and his children forever. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, 
is now and will be forever. Amen. And we continue with the Apostles' Creed on page 120. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Dear friends, the Lord be with you. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. And we continue on page 122 with suffrages B, that this evening may be holy, good, and peaceful. That your holy angels may lead us in paths of peace and goodwill that we may be pardoned and forgiven for our sins and offenses, that there may be peace to your church and to the whole world, that we may depart this life in your faith and fear and not be condemned before the great judgment seat of Christ, that we may be bound together by your Holy Spirit in the communion of the Blessed Virgin Mary and all your saints, entrusting one another and all our life to Christ. O oh God, you declare your almighty power chiefly in showing mercy and pity. Grant us the fullness of your grace that we, running to obtain your promises, may become partakers of your heavenly treasure. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Lord our God, please comfort us in these times of stress, anxiety, fear, and anger. Help us to find the peace, comfort, patience, love, and forgiveness that lie within us, many times outside of our conscious awareness. Help us to forgive ourselves and others from patience and disagreements. Help us realize that we are blessed, too blessed to be stressed. Amen. And then, if you will, join me on page 833 for prayer 62. <coughs> Excuse me. Page 833, prayer 62, the prayer of St. Francis. Let us pray together. Lord, make us instruments of your peace. Where there is hatred, let us sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is discord, union. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. Where there is sadness, joy. Grant that we may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive, it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, and it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. Amen. O God, you manifest in your servants the signs of your presence. Send forth upon us the spirit of love, that in companionship with one another, your abounding grace may increase among us. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. At this time, I invite your thanksgivings and intercessions silently or aloud.
give you thanks as always, Father, for each person gathered here in worship. Uh, I ask, ask that um, you be with them. Grant them peace. Grant them a sense of your presence and of your deep love for them. I lift them up, their concerns, uh, their cares, and their thanksgivings as well. And I lift up those who are near and dear to them. I ask that your presence would be among us, protecting us, keeping us safe, and helping us to bring your love to the world around us. Amen. On page 113 is our final prayer. It begins, Blessed are you, O Lord. Um, please turn there with me, and when you get there, let us pray that together. Please pray with me. Blessed are you, O Lord, the God of our fathers, creator of the changes of day and night, giving rest to the weary, renewing the strength of those who are spent, bestowing upon us occasions of song in the evening. As you have protected us in the day that is past, so be with us in the coming night. Keep us from every sin, every evil, and every fear, for you are our light and salvation and the strength of our life. To you be the glory for endless ages. Amen. And then on page 114. My friends, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon you and give you peace. Dear friends, go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Alleluia. Alleluia. All right, so good to see you as always. Marissa, hope you're well. Uh, let's see, at 8 o'clock, Deacon Sue will be back for Compline. So if you need that extra boost of just peaceful, holy goodness at 8 o'clock, she'll be here uh, leading you in prayers. Hope you have a blessed evening, and I'll see you tomorrow at 6.30.